Well, it's an understatement to say that it was a big week in Washington. We saw the third impeachment of a president in U.S. history, but also the approval of the USMCA trade deal by the House and passage of spending bills to keep the government running. Joining us right now to talk more about D.C.'s 2020 agenda and how it will impact Wall Street is Fred Kemp. He's Atlantic Council president and CEO. He's also a CNBC contributor. And, uh, Fred, let's go through where we stand right now. Probably not a tough attention being paid on the idea that spending bills were able to come together between the House and the Senate, and the president is expected to sign that today. It's the last day he can to keep things running at the government. We didn't really uh, give it too much attention this week, and we probably should. Well, I mean, it's interesting. I've been looking at uh, headlines across the world, um, and very few are putting the impeachment on their front pages. It's interesting that you're talking about space because a lot of people are just looking to see whether America can actually maintain its level uh, in the world in terms of innovation, in terms of global leadership, in terms of, you know, will 2020 be the year of the indispensable nation being indisposed because it's so inward focused and other things are moving on. But you are right. There are things getting done. USMCA uh, got done in the House and will go to the Senate uh, and will be voted on next year. You have a phase one trade deal, although, you know, I've been skeptical on this program before that people aren't looking uh, enough at the fundamental breakdown between China and the United States, the decoupling, which I think is a more important story, while the markets still seem to look at phase one, don't bet on phase two or phase three before the end of this administration. And so <clears throat> you can look at this as, as, as half empty, uh, which is a, 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 a shock-prone year coming at us with the United States distracted internally and our adversaries testing us and, uh, and our allies hedging their bets. Or you can look at it as half full, which is, you know, all things considered, the economy is pretty good. The uh, largest global middle class we've ever had, health care, technology, education, more access to that than we've ever seen in our lifetimes. So I, I, I think it's actually, um, I, I'm looking at this as a more half full um, uh, than a half empty. You know, with the um, impeachment hearings that have been taking place, it, it, both sides have had some sort of reason, some sort of motivation to actually work together to make it look like they are doing things and not just, uh, uh, you know, shooting at each other through all of this. Next year, do you think it becomes much more difficult to pass any sort of legislation? Well, I, I think two things. First of all, I think it becomes more difficult to pass legislation. And second of all, you have volatility around the world that will test markets and will test U.S. leadership. Uh, North, North Korea, Venezuela, Iran is one I'm particularly watching because their economy is going down further and further, and they may test things uh, some more. So uh, if you think that the, you, if the 2019 was a little bit volatile with uh, Iranian missile hitting a Saudi oil field, with impeachment, with, with the U.K. pulling out of uh, the E.U., uh, my, my prediction would be that 2020 will be uh, an even more volatile year with the U.S. taking its eye off the ball a little bit. And so I, domestically, I think things will be tough to get through. But I think uh, internationally, it will be very tough for the U.S. to continue its global leadership during this, this year. And I think the Chinese particularly will test that and try to expand their own remit around the world. Mm -hmm.